The Miami Heat have done it. They have survived what was potentially the biggest choke in the history of basketball. Yes, bigger than the Warriors blowing a 3-1 lead in the finals. Because the Miami Heat were on the verge of blowing a 3-0 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals. Luckily for them though, Game 7 went their way. Now, we could talk about how this team nearly fell apart towards the end, or how they got here in the first place. Because they are an 8 seed, you need to remember that. You might not be thinking about it because of the way they've played this whole postseason, but they were not good the entire regular season. Pretty mid, actually. Barely made the play-in, barely made it out of the play-in, barely made it into the playoffs, where they went up against the one-seeded Bucks, took care of business, then went on to play, what, New York, I'm pretty sure? Slaughter New York. I mean, after you beat the Bucks, New York ain't nothing. And now they're playing the Boston Celtics. And honestly, the way they play those first three games, like I said, you forget that they're in eighth seed, but they are. So I don't want to talk about how they almost sold it, but rather how this series came to be and what every game was like. But before we move on to talking about every game in this series, let's slow down a bit so you guys have some time to subscribe because only 1% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Yes, 99% of my viewers are unsubscribed. Now we're on the road to a thousand and you could be the thousandth subscriber. So, you know, just click it, just click it. Anyway, let's get back to the video. And now it's time to talk about game one of Boston versus Miami, holding place in TD Garden. Now, the first half is what you would expect from this series going into it, where Boston had a strong nine point lead at halftime and that wasn't thanks to their stars shooting the lights out. I mean, both shot 500 or better from the field and combined for a total of 29 points. Now, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were brilliant in the first half, and I think Malcolm Brogdon's 12 points off the bench also contributed to this lead. And as great as Boston was in the first half, it didn't matter because Miami took over in the third quarter where things really shifted as Miami would go on to score 46 points in this quarter alone. Now, what changed for Miami? Well, I think it was because of one guy, Max Struess. Now, Max Struess only scored 15 points in game one, but 13 of those points came in the third quarter where Miami really broke away with this one. And I think that Jimmy Butler's 20 points in the second half helped solidify this win over Boston as Miami would go on to beat them 123 to 116 in game one of the series, leading us to game two which again took place in Boston because that's how basketball works. Anyway, the Miami Heat went into game two with a lot more confidence than they had in game one. Not saying that they didn't have any, but when you beat the better team on their home court in game one, the confidence has to get boosted, which is exactly what happened with Miami and why they had the lead at halftime this go around. And I also think that Jimmy Butler's 12 points with Caleb Martin's 14 were the reason that Miami had such a good lead. I mean, my Caleb Martin went six for nine from the field with only one turnover in the first half. Now, these random role players stepping up for the Heat are the reason they're having so much success. Now, that success would kind of slow down a bit with Boston outplaying them in the third quarter of game two. And, you know, that outplayment came because Jason Tatum stepped up dropped 15 points of his own in the third quarter alone, getting Boston right back into this game. Unfortunately for Boston, it wouldn't matter because in the fourth quarter of game two, the Miami Heat kind of sealed it out, winning the quarter by 14 and winning the game 111 to 105. Now what happened in the fourth quarter? Well, maybe it was Duncan Robinson's eight points or Kayla Martin's dropping another four because again, the, the bench players came in stepped up, scored in the fourth, beat Boston by six, taking a 2-0 series lead. And going into Miami for game three, everyone kind of thought, oh, Boston might actually be in trouble here. I mean, they lost their first two games at home. Game three is in Miami. I don't see them winning that, you know? And they didn't. Boston did not win game three because the Heat were absolutely crazy. This was probably one of, if not their best game of the entire series. I mean, let's take a look at it. Miami took a strong eight point lead in the first quarter and they wouldn't let their foot off the gas. I mean, in the first half alone, Miami ended up scoring, I wanna say 60 points. And that wasn't thanks to Gabe Vincent's 10. Yes, Gabe Vincent. Um, hell, Kayla Martin dropped another 11. 
and Duncan Robinson dropped 10 of his own. So these role players, Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent, Caleb Martin combined for half of the team's points at halftime. They outscored the stars in Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Now, in the second half of game three, things didn't really work out for Boston too well. They kind of got bullied and beat down even more than they did in the first half. And again, that's in thanks to these role players. Gabe Vincent dropped 19 points in the second half of game three. And plus he had what? One assist, one steal, two rebounds, one block. Gabe Vincent did it all game three. He was the star of the show, which is probably why he led the game in points after he scored 29 this game. Jimmy Butler didn't even have to do much in game three. All Jimmy did was, you know, kind of show up. He scored 16 points and said, here, I'm not going to do shit. And all of a sudden, Boston, the two seed in the East, the best team in the NBA, is looking at a 3-0 deficit. Now, 150 teams have found themselves in this position, and not a single one has been able to pull off the comeback. There's been teams that have come close, but not a single one has done it. So heading into game four, with Joe Mazzula as your coach, you're shaking in your boots. You're kind of feeling screwed. Anyway, game four comes around, and Boston... You know, they kept the game close, but they were losing at halftime. Barely, but they were. Now, why was Boston in game four? Well, maybe that's because Derek White dropped 11 points. Derek White doesn't usually do that. So shout out to Derek White playing so well in, this, in the first half. But the second half is where things got out of hand for Miami because Boston would outscore them in the third quarter by 15. Why? Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum showed him that he is Kobe. As much as he tries to be Kobe, he is Kobe. Drops 14 points. Boston ends up winning the game 116 to 99. And all of a sudden, you're starting to hear mumbling that maybe Boston does what no one thought they could do. Puts us to game five. Now, game five takes place in TD Garden. So my Miami's a little shaken up. They just lost their first game. But they'll take care of Boston, right? They'll take care of game five. They can do it. And Boston stomps them. Stomps them in the first quarter. 20 to 35. Miami is down. How? Well, maybe it's because Boston had Jason Tatum scoring 12 points and Derek White stepped up again in the first half. Let's just round of applause for Derek White. But anyway, Jason Tatum, Derek White, they scored 20 points alone, more than Miami scored in the first quarter. Anyway, Miami gets stomped in the first quarter. That's about it. They stay behind like the entire game, end up losing game five pretty embarrassingly, 97 to 110. One of the more boring games, I'd say, of the series. Anyway, this puts us at game six, and a lot of analysts said that if it went to, that if Miami were to win this series, they're gonna need to do it in by game six, because this is the last game in Miami, and if it goes to game seven, Boston's not losing on their home court, especially if they make a 3-3 comeback at that point. So game six was pivotal for Miami. They were in their, they were in their home, they were in their zone. Boston didn't care, because well, they kind of cared because Boston did everything in their power to lose game six. Let's be real. Boston shot terribly from the three-point line and kept taking more of them. Anyway, Boston was leading by, I want to say, four or five points at half. Should have been way more. How? Well, Jason Tatum scored 25 in the first half. Even though he shot 0 for 4, he scored 25 and was leading. How is Boston winning with such a poor shooting performance? Well, maybe it's because Bam Adebayo and Jace and Jimmy Butler combined for 4 for 17 shooting from the field in the first half. Yes, the superstars were not there for Miami in game 6, especially at the beginning of the game. Now, why do I say beginning of the game? Well, because as, yeah, they struggled like the entire game, but the fourth quarter came around and Jimmy Butler turned on Nitro Boost or something because he scored 15 points in the fourth quarter after not not being able to shoot all night yes he scored 15 kept Miami in this game shot three free throws to keep their season alive give them a lead with three seconds left and then Marcus Smart pulls this shit he makes he misses a three-point shot Derek White tips it in with like 0.2 seconds left on the clock Boston wins game six yes they are going to TD Garden they went to TD Garden for a game seven heartbreaker from Miami how do they respond well we know how they respond which is why we're here now I mean game seven beautiful way to end the series anyway that's all I wanted to say I wanted to make a quick video as soon as the series ended this is what that was uh, much love deuces to all of you guys